Welcome to our podcast, Stepping into Shakespeare, a podcast journey with the Bard. In this podcast, we are talking about how we approach the play Hamlet as actors, what we learn along the way, and we share our experience. I am Therese Duria, a Swiss actress based in the UK. And I'm Sarah Lynn Dawson, a British actress based in LA. The purpose of this podcast is to document our rehearsal process with reading Hamlet. Today we are talking with Emmanuel about the characters he is reading. He reads Polonius, Laureates and Guildenstern. Emmanuel is a very talented American actor with 25 years experience on stage in front of the camera and behind the microphone, spanning comedy, drama, commercials and video games. He was born in Bulgaria and schooled in England. He graduated from Stella Adler Conservatory and Shakespeare Lab at a public theatre in New York City. He's based in Los Angeles since 2001, and his notable film credits include Indiana Jones 4, The Other Guys, After We Fell, The Russian Bride, and his TV credits include Pandora, Flaked, Alias, Sex and the City, and Las Vegas. Welcome to our podcast. Welcome Thank to you. our podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So how did you first get introduced to Shakespeare? How did I first get in? Well, besides the fact that we used to watch uh, the uh, BBC productions of Shakespeare, they, they were great back in those days where, we, where I sort of had very little um, knowledge of uh, Shakespeare. They were great. There were sort of interesting costumes and there were pretty ladies and there was, you know, and then, you know, um, when you're in England, they also, you, you have to study Shakespeare. So uh, it was uh, kind of an interesting um, introduction to Shakespeare. As, as most things, as you know, if they kind of shove down your throat, you have to do it. Usually it was kind of, ah, why do I have to do it? What's so big about it? Mm. So this was the, uh, this is the original uh, approach to it. Uh, it sort of was a bit of a, a mandatory also. Mm -hmm. It's interest, interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, mm -hmm. the language itself uh, brings you in. And, and then you've heard, uh, I guess, w um, sentences or, or uh, quotes from Shakespeare mm -hmm. everywhere. Now we use them mm -hmm. in everyday life. So it's kind of tickles you, you're uh, kind of interested. You go, well. How come? Yeah. It's for 400 years, 500 years, you know, you exactly. still have. So you went to school in the UK, right? That was your... I did. Uh, some of my school went, I went to the mm -hmm. UK, yes. And then, uh, but but I was actually born in Bulgaria. I was born mm -hmm. in Bulgaria. And then um, we moved to uh, London where I went to school. And then I yeah. actually moved back to uh, Bulgaria for a little bit because my mom actually moved. She's originally from Bulgaria. Uh, she moved back. So I went there and uh, spent some time before I actually moved to uh, New York when I started studying acting and um, yeah, so on and so forth. And do, do you think like Shakespeare was known in Bulgaria at that time? Or... Yes, I was, yeah. I was just thinking, you know, the interesting thing is uh, part of the reason I was so interested in it is because uh, as a foreigner who's actually uh, mm -hmm. adopted to a, let's say a new, um, say for example, England or, you know, America later mm -hmm. on, there are these advantages if you really read Shakespeare in its mm -hmm. original language. The, the um, rhythm of it, the word association is to what mm -hmm. he uses very specific words for everything. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's not like he he decided to just use really frilly words because it was just the, the fashion of mm -hmm. the time. But he uses mm -hmm. these words because when you step back and just listen to the language, mm -hmm. these words, it's not, he doesn't deliver a, um, an arrow into the bull's eye. It's actually an mm -hmm. arrow that comes to you from a, in a, in a very uh, sort of, uh, he imbues you with these ideas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it was for you, it was almost a tool to getting more into the language. It was, yeah, to a great extent. Yeah. You, you really need to develop your vocabulary, uh, yeah. you know, extensively yeah. in order for you to know yeah. what you're saying. Absolutely. Otherwise, and uh, did you yeah. ever felt like you have a language barrier to get into Shakespeare or never? Uh, you know what, language barrier is a, is a, um, a mental block for people. I don't think yes. there, there isn't a, a, a language barrier whatsoever. If you really want to know, um, you can do it. I mean, the way you mm -hmm. learn how to play guitar, uh, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. And I, mm -hmm. firsthand, I can say that it's just, uh, it doesn't really exist as anything. And, and if people really believe behind it, they're hiding mm -hmm. behind something. That's just not mm -hmm. the... Uh, it's not an issue. Um, mm -hmm. Granted, some people are really sort of adept to languages, which is mm -hmm. which is helps. But you can really sort of uh, study. And then, you know, firsthand experience. My mom is is very uh, hard of, of like a, a learning languages. She's you mm -hmm. know she she speaks it, so she's she's great. I think you know it's a um, it goes to show that puts your mind to it and you're fine. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's awesome. And what was the mandatory? Because I obviously, the same as you, had mandatory Shakespeare plays at school. Right. So what was your mandatory play? Well, I was, uh, mandatory play was King Lear. And then mm. we had to always do, we have to always, I think a lot of times use like, you, you do the big ones, the Hamlet, you have to do the histories as well. They're just really, um, how should I say, they're just, uh, it's a play that you need to pick, but you have to study the big ones. And one of them, of course, is the Hamlet, then you do the Lear. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Henry V, I think, is a mandatory, you know. So, so we have these, uh, you know, it, it's just, it was never, when, when it's, anything's mandatory, as you know, it's, it's very uh, uh, bothersome for you to do it. You mm-hmm. go, well, Especially as a teenager. <laughs> yeah, of course. You go, what, who on earth would use this? Why? Yeah, but well, did you kind of uh, had a favorite Shakespeare play then in that time, or did it change over time as well? Well, favorite Shakespeare play. Um, you know, I, I didn't at that time. I didn't at that time. It was just Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, mm-hmm. under the uh, umbrella of Shakespeare, anything went. Favorite play. It's it's difficult. You know, the, the comedies, the histories, the uh, the, mm-hmm. the um, uh, tragedies. So I have uh, maybe of the three uh, different genres, maybe one each. But I just say one thing. It's kind of difficult to uh, put your finger on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, and, and that's probably formed lately. It's not, it's, it hasn't been with me at all times, but let's say, you know, mm-hmm. after histories, I'm extremely partial to Henry V and Henry IV. You know, I've, there's, uh, characters in them that I really love, uh, performing, uh, to this day, actually it's so funny. Uh, Sarah had clued me in that you can ask me about it favorite mm-hmm. play so I thought you know what do I still remember and and I have to say that uh, after 20 years I still remember the uh, Henry V monologue which is uh, mm-hmm. we are glad the Dauphin is so pleasant with us when we have matched our rackets to these bowls we will in France by God's grace play a set shall strike his father's crown into the hazard so it's it's one of those things that they stick with you and it's incredible <laughs> to um, to have them and they they really they're just at the back of your mind. And mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it's, apart from anything else, it's because the words are so, so beautiful that you sort of, you remember it as a pattern, as a picture, yeah. mm-hmm. as opposed to remembering it as a fact or, or a statement. Mm-hmm. You know, you remember it more as a picture. So I think this is what, what really sticks, you know. Uh, histories, the tragedy, I would say, I'm, I'm really divided between uh, uh, Macbeth. I love Macbeth in its mm-hmm. sort of, you know the the history, the the mm. what should I say the the whole play is is really incredible, very mystery like, and mm. I, I love that play. And from the comedies, um, I would always go with uh, Twelfth Night. Yes, uh, me too, me too. <laughs> right, yes, there's something about it. You know, two gentlemen were on a close second, but Twelfth Night is my mm. favorite. It's a brilliant play. We've actually read that, haven't we? Yes. But yeah, so you just did the monologue. Who's the character? This was uh, Henry V. Uh-huh. Uh, I was extremely impressed by uh, Kenneth Branagh came out uh, in that was a long time ago. I think it was it it was eighty six or eighty nine was it or maybe it was at ninety mm-hmm. no it was not eighty six I'm sorry it was probably ninety one ninety two whatever he came out with Henry V and and he did such a splendid job that to me I sort of I was I've I've seen that um, movie mm-hmm. maybe. Uh, at least five times. Wow. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, it's and it's uh, it's just sort of the 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 beauty of the language and this mm-hmm. particular monologue is is absolute uh, uh, favorite of mine for the fact that it's it's very interesting. The, the challenge of it is the fact that you need to really perform a royal monologue with a mm-hmm. person who is very churlish. So, in put it in Shakespearean terms, because you yeah. know Henry V is a basically a I should say a little a little. Uh, rascal that runs mm-hmm. around with the uh, with the with the bad boys in the beginning until they they throw the crown on his uh, head and he has to become a king um mm-hmm. so it is a, it is one of those things when you sort of uh, when you have to account for it uh in in your in your presentation and your and your in your monologue you know mm-hmm. and and that goes with everything that's what i want to say is that I think I relate mostly to characters as opposed to plays. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How did you relate to Polonius when you were reading Polonius? What kind of feeling or experience do you have? To- you know, the Polonius was wonderful because, you know, I had never, I mean, I've, I've read of him, but, you know, mm-hmm. you need to really focus on what you do. Otherwise, uh, I feel that um, a lot of times there are, because of so many 
uh, plays and so many performances have been of that particular character, I feel a lot of time people sort of tend to find one of these uh, out of the box character sort of shapes and then they just throw it on stage. You know, it's it's wonderful. It works. It's stood the test of time. Um, but I I'd, I'd like to really put my stamp on things the way they're done. And uh, I'd like to kind of form my own opinion. So when you're mm -hmm. asking that, um, I formed my opinion based on the words, what he was mm -hmm. saying. Uh, I tried not to be influenced by any uh, any performances because I've forgotten. Like I've not seen yeah. Hamlet in many, many yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was just the words themselves really mm -hmm. form your opinion, the way he speaks. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And then I, as I was telling Sarah, you know, I performed it. I think it was just, it's just not, I hadn't really uh, tried to, I, I didn't spend much time on it. So it was just a mm -hmm. bit of a, a suggestion as to what, which direction I would go if we would just stage it as a play. Mm -hmm. So I felt that in this particular instance, uh, Polonius was a little bit kind of mumbly. So, and then, you know. Because he you thought he's old. When I was listening to you, I had like an older man in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's old. Also, he's, he seems to be sort of, you know, he seems very wise. He has mm -hmm. these... Um, he does have some um, great lines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he seems to be seems to be one of these people that sort of, um, you know, always has this, you know, he's very smart and, you know, he's the yeah. king's, uh, you know, consort. So he, he has these uh, things about him. But the fact that he was forgetting, you know, where was I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that is a clue. That, that Those are great clues, you know. And when you read the lines, there are great clues about the character. This is... This is why I think Shakespeare is the first one. It was a funny thing. What I was thinking is that Shakespeare is the first one to really develop characters, mm -hmm. um, like really develop characters in terms of how they speak, in terms of most times people turn from mannerisms as well. I mean, lots of these mm -hmm. huge actors, they, it's about mannerism. How do, how do these people, how do they act? What are they, what's their mannerism, you know, in, on stage? And, and in terms of when you ask what is the favorite plays, I, I personally feel that, you know, plays are plays. He, Shakespeare got them from these Italian, mm -hmm. old Italian plays. He cobbled mm -hmm. them together from this play and that play. Oh, isn't it going to sound great? Oh, that's going to be wonderful if this mm -hmm. happened. But the most, I think the biggest, um, what should I say, the biggest lost words now, uh, um, contribution that he made mm -hmm. is those characters that he created. Uh, leave aside the plot, leave aside um, everything else. But the the way they they drive the story through is mm -hmm. what I really enjoy so. yeah it's fascinating and you guys I don't know if you know but I was reading yesterday that Hamlet is based on this old um like a story I think about Amleth who was this like legend right. and he took the story and mm -hmm. he, he changed it and so it's really interesting you know when you look into his journey as a writer and how he oh yeah mm -hmm. yes I mean mm -hmm. he's back in those days they didn't have really uh <laughs> these uh, the laws that we have now and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he, he was able to cobble together things from plays mm -hmm. that were actually written. It was the only thing that has actually uh, has more structure were the histories, I think, because they mm -hmm. really were loosely based on the history. Mm -hmm. So that was uh, those plays are really um, the ones that you can say, oh, that's him yeah. himself. Have you read Polonius before? I had not, no. No, no you, it was the first before. time you interacted with that character. It was the first time and, I interacted with the character, yes. And did you have like a line which made like a special impression on you or? He has this um, uh, line which is, fringes to catch woodcocks. Ah. That, you know that that line actually was repeated by Laertes later on? No. The same, no. Almost the same. He says, fringes, ah. that was the springe to my own demise or my own doom. He would use a line that later on is, uh, and that gives you this connection, father, son, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. so mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting, you know, it's interesting because, you know, I've no, no idea if you see that in, um, in plays by other people, you know, perhaps you, you do, mm -hmm. if you greet plays, you know, uh, but it's, it's just the extremely um, fine tuning mm -hmm. of, of a play where uh, every single detail sort of links with something else. Um, so yeah, so this one and and the again the uh, uh, the other thing that made impression me was the how uh, because when you read the characters, these for me, mm -hmm. I like to read the characters and see what they what do they say. I, I I haven't seen it or purposely I didn't see it. And I, it's, it's just let's see what the language brings. You see, the one mm -hmm. thing with Shakespeare is you cannot act before or after a line. You have to act on the line. The, mm -hmm. the lines okay. have to give you the lines. Actually, it's written so that the line gives you the emotion, gives you the yeah. breaks, gives you the uh, the uh, 
the level of performance, mm -hmm. everything is in those lines. I went to a very special, just to, to take it on a tangent, I went to a school um, after I had done my education at Stella Adler, I went to the uh, Joseph Papp Public Theater and they had a Shakespearean program with two people to this day. I remember the excellent teachers. Uh, his name is Randall Duck Kim. He was um, a New Yorker of Asian origin, beautiful uh, guy, really, really uh, spectacular. They had done, they had been dealing with Shakespeare for, I think for the better half of like 30 years. So they they wow. really knew, they knew with so many people they had actually, they had these workshops mm -hmm. and they had a, a two and a half month program at the uh, public theater. And um, what I got, my first big jump into Shakespeare was from them because they mm -hmm. really, said very important things. There is never any pauses in Shakespeare. The mm -hmm. only pause mm -hmm. that is given to you is by a full stop. Everything mm -hmm. else is is a, a line change, uh, uh, basically an intention change. Like a comma is an mm -hmm. intention change. It's not a pause like we would have in a play. Yeah. Um, because you need to keep the rhythm going. Shakespeare is extremely and mostly rhythm. I really love that about Shakespeare, because even if sometimes as an actor, maybe you're unsure about something or you're kind of like, if you just say the words, it carries you. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's absolutely. Yes, and it's ma absolutely. kind of magic. You're just like, yep. OK, just trust it. The, the one thing about it is trusting it. Trust it and exactly. go with it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, it's it's all about this rhythm that keeps driving behind mm -hmm. you. And, and really, if you step mm -hmm. on it, once you drop the rhythm, you really are killing the intention. Mm -hmm, that's that's mm -hmm. the the unfortunate thing with Shakespeare, mm -hmm. and that's why Shakespeare is, is a constant talk. Yeah, there's a constant yeah. talk. There's never there's never any pauses where people are looking at and stuff. Everything is on the yeah. lines I, as really the rhythm nice. goes on. And I think that's why it works really well for what we've done as like an hour podcast because when yeah. you're listening mm -hmm. to it, you're like you get almost lulled into this like listening vibe. You know, it's really right. kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow. I didn't notice that before because I always had the visual, but actually removing the visual and just hearing the audio, it, it makes yeah. it something different. How do you feel reading the old English? Was that like a challenge for you or it came naturally to you? Well, um, in the beginning, I've actually, you know, the funny thing is that this particular uh, copy of it was, it was very easy, you know, so I've, mm -hmm. Back in those days when I was studying, we, we used to read the folio. So the folio is the, the original transcript of the original plays. And I think there's a quarto, there's the first folio, and there's also the first quarto and stuff like that. It's uh, right now really is, <laughs> I'm beginning to forget. I haven't, I haven't dealt with this in over 20 years, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so um, the, the, these manuscripts were the first one that was transcribed. So they were, they were a little bit hard to read, however, uh, the funny thing is the scholars had come up with directions that I, I cannot argue with those things, but they they would basically infer from the way that uh, some of the words have been written with the way that they were written, like the S or the, I think some of the writing or the way the comma is or the way the semicolon is, um, they would infer how to how the direction of the character goes. So it's very interesting. It's mm. extremely interesting. It's like, mm. a, it's like a Morse code to see those things and kind of follow them and go, oh my God, that makes such a difference. Because mm -hmm. you can read anything. Uh, you can read those lines. And if you break the, um, the intention, the line is unclear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing with Shakespeare. You have to be mm -hmm. uh, like a 110% clear as to what the intention is and how the line goes. Because if you break the line in half, then the intention's gone. And at that point, mm -hmm. you kind of go, what was that all about? I have no idea what he said. Mm -hmm. If you follow the intention, the line is absolutely clear. And that comes back to this thing. It's not a direct arrow into the bullseye. Those arrows come from you because it's like a, it's like a surround. Uh, it, it imbues you with these ideas that are coming mm -hmm. in, in a roundabout way. It's never direct. It is never, I want to kill you. It's never that mm -hmm. way. And, and mm -hmm. Shakespeare never uses that. He would say, it, it would say the line, but in a completely different way for a specific reason. I think it's interesting as well. Like in some of the verses, you get the rhyming couplets like at the mm -hmm. end, and then you get one that doesn't rhyme, but that's because like they said it differently back in, you know, in Shakespeare's time. Right. And they would say the word a different way, but the way we pronounce it, it's like throws it off a little and you're like, right. oh, it's, I kind of find that really interesting. As far removed and ancient we may think it is, uh, the more and more I actually read it, it you, I get the feeling that it basically could be today. 
it's just mm -hmm. a different way of saying, as I said, you know, instead of uh, I will kill you, it comes in a, with a different mm -hmm. words and it's the same, mm -hmm. basically uh, the same mm -hmm. intention. So mm -hmm. um, it's extremely interesting. It's very, it's like a riddle, you know, working Absolutely. on that riddle, working yeah. how, you know, and then once everything jives together, as Sarah said, uh, it's just magical. And that, that's what it is. It's magical. Okay. I don't think that really there is a bad performance of it. It's just most of the time, I feel most of the time people either don't spend enough time clearing out the intentions mm -hmm. or they would just not adhere to the rhythm that the play needs. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are the, the pitfalls. Or if you try to be a director and you really sort of take the... Uh, take it into a completely new land, new direction, then perhaps mm -hmm. that could also be a, a damaging to the intention of the integrity of the play. I mean, a perfect example is if you see Roman, if you watch uh, Roman Polanski's Macbeth, I mean, it's a beautiful visual spectacle. However, I think he destroys the play in and out of itself. It's mm -hmm. just, it, it's a different expression of that play, uh, mm -hmm. which is beautifully visually very challenging. However, I think Shakespeare really provides for you to see those to see all the images with words. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shakespeare provides yeah. for that. You don't need to yeah. have a camera for you to do a Shakespearean play. You do not need a camera. Absolutely. So, and again, it's very interesting. I went to see an exhibit, just to, I'm sorry, to, on a tangent again, but I went to see an exhibit by um, Van Gogh. Yeah, exactly. So when you, um, when you see those things, uh, you basically, same thing with those plays. You know, when you read all these lines, you know, they yeah. sometimes they kind of, may kind of go, oh, why would you say this long sentence, you know? Yeah. If you, step back, if you yeah. Give, give the rhythm, it's it's due course. If you follow the intentions and yeah. you step back, all of a sudden there's a picture for you. It's kind of exposition, you know, he's doing the exposition. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. That's why you don't need a camera. You just need somebody who, who really delivers the lines. And as I was saying to Sarah, you know, bear mm -hmm. in mind that um, the, the rumor is actually... Uh, Burton, Richard Burton used to do Hamlet. That's what I was telling him. On I was it two bottles of vodka, mm -hmm. three bottles of vodka a night. Incredible masters of the craft that they would nothing would stop them, not even yeah. <laughs> being absolutely. <laughs> I mean, we're we're doing a reading, so it's one thing, but memorizing all of that that takes yes. some brain power, doesn't it? That does. There was a great there was a great Monty Python sketch, and he goes, you know, uh, they were asking, is it John Cleese that was doing it? It was a funny thing. He said, oh, yeah, well, now, what's, what's the most uh, difficult play? He said, oh, I think it's King Lear. Because you know, there's all these words, you know. It's not just learning the words. It's also learning to put them in the right order. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But the artwork of Shakespeare is so rich and it fascinates so many people. I think that's really, and everyone tries to find their own approach in different right. mediums. And I think right. till this day, that makes it so outstanding, isn't it? it yeah, definitely, 100%. And I think like Emmanuel was saying, like, we all have our characters that we resonate mm -hmm. with and people mm -hmm. we like. And, you know, those, mm -hmm. those monologues stay with you and those characters stay yeah. with you, actually. Yeah. And what about yeah. uh, reading Laertes? Because you've read, have you, what character have you read in Hamlet? Like, because I know you've read Hamlet before. I read Hamlet before, yes. Mm -hmm. I've, uh, I've, I actually uh, read Laertes a little bit, but we just uh, did in that school, we did the uh, uh, monologue with the, I had chosen the scene between the fencing, between the fencing match with, uh, with Hamlet. And I played Laertes in that. But that was actually part of the training when you have wow. to put uh, action with words. I mean, th that's a great thing about the theatre because, you know, you do have... Mm -hmm somewhat baited spears as fences mm -hmm. uh, and, and rapiers, but you still need to be good enough to perform and come out clear because you're going to yeah. be on stage mm -hmm. and do mm -hmm. the action. This is the challenge when you do it live as opposed to sitting mm -hmm. in front of the camera. But um, yeah, so I had read a little bit of Laertes and Hamlet. Th those are the only two characters that I had read. Okay. And Hamlet is like the role, isn't it, really, for an actor? Everyone always loves that role. Yes, it was. You know what, Ham? I, I could be a bit of an iconoclast. I've never had this feeling someone had said to me many years ago, oh, gosh, I'm, I'm past the age I could play Hamlet. And I said, you know, I don't regret that. You know, I, it's not been, it hadn't been one of my uh, top to perform Hamlet. I have no, no idea why. I, I just, um, is. We're talking with, with Sarah. I think the characters is, uh, I find it, I mean, uh, hopefully I don't sound as a know-it-all, but I find it a little bit um, too, no, it's not the character. I 
find them that, as I said to Sarah, I think the whole play is about like a karmic, karma catching up with every single character in that play. And that's why I think every single mm-hmm. character dies except for Horatio. All of them seem to have a, a sort of, have done, they do get involved with, with on the somehow on the dark side and then that mm-hmm. catches up with them. So Hamlet seems to be one of those things. And uh, apart from everything else, it's just this sort of the uh, man combating himself uh, thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe it's not my thing. Who knows? I'm more into, I like to play Hotspur, play mm-hmm. these sort of characters that are sort of, you know, you will not. <laughs> Yeah, so I just I wanted to chip in my two cents because I was thinking about mm-hmm. it. So um, in terms of favorite plays, uh, I think, again, I was going to say to my point that I think most of the plays are for actors uh, because the, the characters really make up those plays. And, and, and uh, to, to the point, like my wife would be very hard to persuade to go see a play, especially Shakespearean play. And uh, even if it's going to be the most incredible performance, uh, they are really sort of actors uh, um, showcases. They, 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 if you are, if you really want to do, and, and people who really enjoy Shakespeare, they would go see it. Um, but they are actors showcases. These characters are, uh, to do well, you have to have the training, you have to have the stamina, you have to have the, uh, uh, you know, everything has to, you have to have the right cast, you know? So it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's really, a, it's very interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a huge chunk to, to take on Shakespeare. Yeah, it definitely exactly. is. But, um, what I loved about our readings is just being able to like collaborate with you guys and work with you guys because it's oh, really, yes. yeah, it's fantastic. It's incredible that exactly. you know, with Zoom now we can just like bridge the yeah. world. We have yes. Switzerland. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. And it, just to think like we're not even in the same like time zone, but we're, right. we're just yeah. interacting in that moment. It's, and yeah. I feel like I learned so much, honestly, to see everyone, how they approach the characters the different ways I feel like I learned a lot just by watching and interacting with you guys it's fantastic to see like other people's uh, interpretations exactly anyone that you don't have to be an actor it's very interesting to even learn from a layman that would just read lines because you know everyone just gets something from them and uh, Mm -hmm. it's incredible but the language itself just uh, really structures Mm -hmm. it Again, I, I don't think the accent matters. I mean, he, yeah. you know, nowadays, you know, you can see that everyday people and a lot of these, a lot of these, I mean, these people are not English to begin yeah. with. I mean, yeah. look, look at the, all the, a lot of the histories, a lot of the, they, yeah. they're not English. Those people are not English. Mm-hmm. They were, mm-hmm. they were basically brought into an English language because, you know, mm-hmm. he was the one that tied it all together. But you can have any accent and read Shakespeare, any yeah. accent, as long For as you sure. clear. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you, you know, don't Cleon, or let's say, for example, it's not Cleon, but you know, a lot of these names are not English names. They're not English. Yes. A lot yeah. of the plays are, are taking place in all Albania, let's say yeah. Italy, yeah, all yeah. over the place. Why do? Why should they sound, uh, yeah. you know, Anglo-Saxon? They they don't have to. They don't yeah. have to sound Anglo-Saxon. Very, you can have German accent. You can have French thing. accent. Yeah. Why not? Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And that's what I was saying, Teresa. Like, you know, Hamlet is set in Denmark. Danish. Yeah. 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 You can have <laughs> <Danish accent>. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't worry about that. And I think it sounds really nice in different accents. I really like Shakespeare in different mm-hmm. accents. It mm-hmm. sounds awesome. Well, thank you so much. This has been brilliant. Thank you, thank you for having me here. And yeah. uh, let's do it more often. I, uh, I'd love that. Let's, uh, and just keep me in mind for Henry V. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> in our next episode, we will talk about the character of Hamlet's father, who appears as a ghost, played by Bill Jackson. 